people need to realize the actual extent of how difficult it is to properly transition. Thank so you. know what you want before you start because you've got to have the balls to go through with it. Thank you. Run. Thank you. <laughs> um, it is, it, it's, it's rough. Hey, everybody. I got myself a good one today. So I've been wanting to talk to this guy for a long time. We're like total buddies and he's super cool and awesome and you're going to love him. But before we move forward again, thank you always for joining us today and listening to these conversations and we're making a lot of change and it's not only because of these interviews but because of you guys listening commenting pushing liking subscribing all the things you're doing my channel is going crazy it's actually crazy so i think we're all doing something right here so with that i have anton today and anton is a super cool dude so i'm gonna let him do his thing and tell us about himself and then we'll go into the interview so hey anton buddy nice to see you hey Buck. Thanks for having me, and hi everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, no, this is awesome. What what a great privilege, um, Buck. We've been in touch for a little while now, quite a few years actually. It's taken me a while to actually get to the point of um to speaking with you online. Um, and actually, uh, some of that some of that has been uh, a little bit of the fear of the of the of the flack, the pressure uh, from the community, and, and what what that would do to me, um, and also the mixed feelings and 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 the mixed. Um, information I was receiving and everything, you know, it was, it was very taboo. Uh, so obviously I, I know. I'm, past, I'm past that point now, and I, but I'm grateful for your patience. <laughs> no, I'm grateful for you. No, 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 dude. You know how I feel. A lot of people now are starting to step up. They're like, it's time for me. I get emails that say it's time now. It's so every little bit of all of us who's put our, our, our literally step out into the insanity we are actually making change. So it didn't matter that it took you this amount of time, dude, you're doing it. And that's what I care about because, you know, these people need to be exposed and we need to talk about what it means to actually be a transsexual person. And these people are co-opting a space that is a, is a dangerous for the actual real transsexual people, even little young people that I, I don't believe there's trans kids, but I believe kids struggle with stuff. And I think that if they have bad role models and they have being duped into shit, like you can change your sex at three, then we're, we're screwed as a, as a whole space that we've really put a lot of work into and you have as well. So, so with that, why don't you, first, I just want to get a little ba background if that's okay. So people can under understand you a little bit more. So yeah. where are you from and your age and when you started transitioning? I was born in Queensland in 82. I'm 41 years old. Uh, yeah. I, um, I was born female, obviously, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and well, maybe not so obviously, but by, by, by. <laughs> not obvious, dude, you look <laughs> totally like a dude. So um, you got it. <laughs> I, um, I, I have to say, um, my, my, oh, some of my family view me as a lesbian, um, because I'm in a, uh, I'm married to a woman, um, yeah. and they don't accept me. This is just the digression. Sorry. Um, I think I'm the most, I must be the most filthy looking lesbian there is because the lesbians don't want me. I'm telling you, they don't, want me. I don't fit in their space. Um, anyway, uh, awesome. Thank you for not, <laughs> thank you for respecting female space. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah. so yeah, um, I was born here and then I, but I was raised in Victoria. Uh, I love Victoria. Um, yeah. it was very cold though where I was and, uh, and I don't miss that at all. I came back to Queensland um, 12 years ago and I've been living here independently. Now that's a really big thing to say independently for me um, because uh, I was raised in a religious cult, um, and a high control environment um, and I was not able to um, understand why I felt like a male and also the fear and shame and uh, everything else that went along with that because um, my religion, well, well, the religion I was in was very homophobic, um, and uh, I was filthy for having those thoughts, uh, those feelings. So I was really, really fearful that I was going to be destroyed by God in the end, anyway. Uh, and that's a really big, heavy uh, load to live with as as a kid, let alone an adult. Um, when you repress your emotions like that from an early age um and uh, uh, being afraid to explore which is what all children should be free to do right explore freely without having brainwashed ideas and 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 constr you know constrictions on them which the community is actually doing to children in itself as well which we can talk about later on but um but uh so 
it makes you ill. It makes you really sick. Uh, I became a sickly person um, as a young kid. Uh, I developed a lot of medical issues. And then at 14, oh, by the way, you were looking for someone who had onset puberty that was, I can't remember yeah. what it was called. Do you have, yeah, oh, do you have that? Yeah, it's me. So, um, well, in a way, I, I got my period when I was nine. Does that count? Yes, I think that before. that's so, well because you're 41. Yes, because I think now it has moved up and young yeah. people are starting. At it. But back then, I don't think that that would be precocious puberty. I hadn't even sure. I hadn't even um, talked about periods with my mum yet, and uh, I went to the toilet and I was bleeding, and I and I called mum and I said, "Mum, mum, I'm scared. Oh, something's happened to me. You know, I'm bleeding." And um, yeah, um, so that was at nine. Um, wow. Uh, it didn't really onset properly, like like a full blown period um, okay. regularly every month until I was fourteen, just before I was fourteen. Okay. But I was getting it. I was getting it on and off from the age of nine. Wow. So what were you also having uh, growth things like gro growing breasts yeah, and breasts were you know. growing, and I felt disgusted because I yeah. always thought I was a boy, and I thought that God was actually going to change me. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. I threw myself more and more into the cult I was raised in to because I thought that the more faith I had, um, the more chances I had of, of God changing me. Uh, I tried to bribe God one night. I, uh, I I had a prayer and and I said, "Look, you know, I think you made a mistake, and but it's okay. Like you don't have to feel bad about that and everything. And if you just change me overnight, I wake up in the morning, a boy. I'll just I'll do what I have to do to take care of all that, that everything that comes my way. You know, nothing on you, God. Um, wow. Yeah. That's the, that's the, <laughs> the innocent. that's like such a child. I mean, that's what children do. That's why, you know, what we're doing with kids telling them they can become a boy when they're a girl and telling that that's, we're lying to them. That's yeah. actually not true. But what you're going through, you're dealing with homophobia, transphobia on some level, just turning into a girl, but you know, you're a boy. I mean, I, I remember feeling like that too, but I was nowhere near in, in that same space. So, wow, my friend. So here you are with your period and then you're freaking out and, and, um, and then at 14, I got diagnosed with a brain tumor and my, oh. my world got turned upside down. So, um, so. from the age of 14 to 24, I was battling with this brain tumor on and off with um, PP shunts. I, I'll just turn a little bit to the side there. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. wow. The scar. Yeah. One down there. Yeah. I've got one yeah. here. I've, I've had 13 brain operations. Um, mm. Wow. And, uh, and yeah, that, and then one big biopsy that, that um, they parted the hemispheres of the brain to get a little sample of the tumor because uh, my tumor's on the brain stem. It can't be operated. And, um, so I still have two tumors there, but they act, thankfully they're, they're not, they're no longer growing. So as long as they stay yeah. stable, we're just, you know, they're good. Um, I'm so sorry, my friend, that is horrifying. So from the age of 14 to 24. Yeah, that was all brain stuff. Really. I, I didn't have time to really focus on my feelings of being transgender. I didn't know what transgender was. Uh, there's yeah, a thing. Sure. Uh, we didn't know what that word was. Uh, now it's like, everyday use but anyway um so you know i, I just I, I but i didn't have i was fighting for survival and it so it didn't really um come into play so much um my, yeah. but my dysphoria was huge my boobs were growing obviously i had my periods um and you know and other things and, and i just and i didn't feel like a girl the pressure religiously to wear clothing that was feminine because you're not allowed to go to church um unless you wear uh skirts and dresses and uh wow. well hey I, I was going to church three times a week, so um, that's a long, that's a lot of getting into cross-dressing clothes for me. Yeah, um, totally. I felt like a butterfly, and uh, but I didn't look like one, and um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it was pretty gross. Um, but the dysphoria got so bad that showering was difficult for me. Um, not that I was stinky and gross by any means. I'm, I'm a very clean right. person, but um, right. I used to give myself like a little mantra. Okay, um, it was like wash it. Dry it, bag it, wash it, dry it, bag oh, it. Oh, I totally know. I get in the shower, wash it, dry it, yeah. bag it, put it in, <laughs> stick undies well, on. Well, that's your, that's actual real dysphoria right there. That is real actual yeah. dysphoria, being so scared to even take a shower or to wash yourself, yeah. the, the fear of touching your own body, right? Yeah. And plus on top of it, the cult. And on top of it, having to wear girls' clothes how many times a week and dress that way, and you're having to shove it down. Well, you were dealing with a lot as a young person. Yeah. 
And um and so it really took its toll on on me mentally and physically. Yeah. Um, then when I I had the opportunity to come to Queensland to work with a singer uh, that I met in Victoria, and uh, I was doing a bit of music, and, and I thought I'm just gonna I should I should do it. I was petrified. There's there's a whole big background story of this. Like I met this movie producer of Mad Max. I don't know if you've seen the Mad Max movies. Oh, met- dude. Dude, are you kidding? <laughs> I love those movies. I was friends with one of the producers because I went and bought my first car off him. <laughs> um, <laughs> and and, and like, I bluffed because he said, I said, what do you do? And he said, oh, I'm a movie producer. And I said, oh, yeah. And he, and he said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I'm a songwriter. <laughs> oh, right on. And I was. I was a songwriter in my bedroom. But, um, um, you know, never done anything. But we became friends. <laughs> And, um, That's so cool. And, uh, and then he, when he heard that I had this opportunity to go to Queensland, he paid for my plane ticket and said, you're going. I organized my accommodation and everything, said, I'm going to set you up. And if you need me, then I will fly there and I'll bring you back. You know, so don't, because I had phobias. I had fears and phobias. I've never done anything in my life. Um, right, because you were in the cult. So when you're in the cult, you're just. just cotton wool, told not to do anything, just, just you know. Be a good person and, and yeah. endure and, uh, and you know, yeah. wait on God to fix things. Um, that was – so um, So going to Queensland was a really big move for me. And, uh, and when I discovered that I could actually live on my own and navigate on my own and travel on my own and experience the world on my own, I, I got the bug and I decided to do it. Um, so I shifted up here two months after yeah. that initial trip and, uh, and I didn't go back. <laughs> um, so in that time, though, I stayed going to – I joined, like, my – I found where the religion was here, um, and I was going to that, you know, to the meetings okay. and everything there. Um, so I was still very indoctrinated. They had all my mind control, and I was still dressing in female clothes. But working in the music scene on the side, I was androgynous, um, and uh, I went by the name Randy, and okay. um, and I was, you know, I, I was I was – I was, well, that that probably made you feel good because you sort of got to be on some yes. level yourself, right? Yeah, I had a little bit of relief. That's right. Um, yeah, but that only lasted so long. Um, so I'm here for ten years. I'm 34, uh, and depression's hitting me harder than ever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, and I just broke down and cried one day when I was meant to be getting ready for a meeting, and I put the dress on the bed and I said, "No," nah. I said to my little cat, "I can't do this." I can't do this. This is stupid. What have I got to lose? What have I got to lose now? I feel to the point where I didn't want to live my life like this anymore. I've been battling with depression. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't considering how to end my life, but I certainly was thinking that it was, you know, an option. Um, it was a fair, a fair option when you when you can't live like this anymore. You know, what's the point? That's um, right. And then, That's right. and and then I thought, no. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to die. I, I, I fought a lot to get to, to stay here already. Um, so I, I, I looked, I started to look into what my condition, you know, what this was and that I went to the doctor. Um, my first GP referred me on to someone else because she said she has Christian beliefs and, uh, and she felt that conflicting and, and wouldn't be able to treat me. Um, I appreciated her honesty, but I didn't as well um, because. Well, I I mean I do uh, actually as well because I do you know it isn't she's how is she going to help you? But I I think like what she did is really important because she's saying to you that she might. Well, she can't help you because she has um, other thoughts about it, right? Yeah, yeah the doctors doctors medically have a have a, a duty to a duty of care to refer you to the people in line that's right she that's did right. she kind of passed me off she did and she should have she should have referred me to the gender clinic straight away or you know yes. and put me in touch with the people that could help rather than yes. just so uh, that's true that's true but maybe she didn't even know how to do that but but so she referred you to another gp she well she didn't actually refer me she um she told me you might want to look into this you could probably contact here um okay. but i'll leave it to you you know? Okay. Um, yeah. So yeah. I could have done with a bit more help. That's what I'm saying. I, I was, that's I was right. Okay. And, and, yeah. But anyway, that's just, but, but as I, I did appreciate though, that she was respectful and honest in her yes. dealing. She wasn't, yes. she didn't make me feel bad. Um, but yeah, it, it was a problem. That's right. I guess what also, what also hit the sore spot and, and it is the fact is that it was religion that was, 
that was making her feel uncomfortable to treat me, and I, and that was a huge sore spot for me. So it was, you know, of course, a hundred percent makes complete was, total it sense. In that sense, it's like, oh, damn it, still, you know, <laughs> it's it's <laughs> it's literally following you. <laughs> so um, yeah um. I, I went through all the evaluations through the gender clinic here in Brisbane um, and it took me about nine to 10 months and that was seeing psychologists and that uh, before okay. I got prescribed Great. and I was 34. So, you know, I had a mature mind. That's right. I could make That's... those decisions for myself, but it still took right. time. And I actually thought it was good that it was thorough and that I was seeing different doctors in their fields and we were discussing it because I was about to make a very life changing decision. That's right. Um, so once I started transitioning, I lost majority of my family due to the religion. They shunned me. Um, and I lost about 80% of my friends overnight. It went, it spread like wildfire through the cult, through the community. And I, it's, and then began about a month of SMS messages, some phone calls, but SMS messages from people saying, uh, oh, I've heard this and this, and we're very sorry to hear that we can no longer talk to you anymore. Um, you know, hopefully you'll change your mind and come back and uh, change your ways and come back to God and then we can talk to you again. I don't even know how I survived that over and over because each time someone did that to me, it was like a stab in the heart. Yeah, yeah. And it, it only actually reinforced to me that this is not God. This is not God. I am not religious. I'm spiritual. I do believe in higher power. Me too. And right. that higher power encompasses love. And love, acceptance, people are different, deal with it. It's the universe made this happen. So how are we saying that people like us don't exist? That's insane. You can't we exist. And willingly stab someone repeatedly. How is that? How is that love? That's right. It's so crazy, dude. I'm so on board with you. You know, I don't shame anyone for their choices of religion, however you want to do that. But real Christians actually accept us because they, they hand it over to God. They, they know that they're not allowed to judge us. That's not a real Christian. They don't judge. Jesus never judged. Jesus hung out with the prostitutes. Jesus was like a, a cool dude. And, and like... That's right. So I get it. You got brainwashed, dude. And you also got all this baggage inside you, and you have to, and now you're transitioning and then, oh my God, that, that's crazy. So now you're getting text messages. We, we don't, we can't talk to you anymore. It is sad. That's sad, dude. Yeah. But it is. luckily for me, I built my own, because in, in the religion I was in, um, you're only meant to associate outside of work hours with people of your own, of that religion. That sure. way you stay in that brainwashed state. And, and, right. and, and um, yeah. whereas I was working in the music scene and I developed a lot of friendships and, uh, and I had a lot right. of good friends. Um, so when I left, I, I had support. I knew I had support. I had friends and I had people to turn to. Um, so that was, that was very fortunate for me. And that was actually my life saving. Like that was the only way I could have actually done it. Um, otherwise well, yeah, it's called a support group. That that's why support groups are so important important when you're going very. through this really we're going through a medical transition yeah. so so now you're going so you decided to take the medical route to transition yeah. okay and so tell me well, about I how that started because i was 34 um so yeah. i was straight on to testosterone um and uh and social transitioning so i cut my hair okay. off you know uh, right i'm already right. cutting off anyway uh it, it was gradually <laughs> shorter and shorter over the years um <laughs> Uh, and, and, you know, but now I, I changed my name legally to Anton and, and, and I started, you know, um, putting things in place. So socially I was coming out, binding my chest, you know, coming out, dressing more ma masculine because we're transitioning, I'm transitioning, right, from female to male. So I want to look like a male, right? There's no confusion then. And that's another, that's another gripe um, I have with, with what's going on these days. Um, I don't identify with that. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, I also don't judge other people. Um, That's right. Because I'll say, uh, I, I had a great, I had a great barrier with the non-binary people um, initially. Uh, I've met quite a few non-binary. I work um, in medical fields with some people that are non-binary too. Um, so I, I, you know, and I respect those people individually. Uh, you know, as, as the person they are, I don't understand. I don't understand their journey. Um, well, because you're not non-binary. No. That's why. Neither am I. And but I. 
that it should be under a different category. It, That's right. That, the sense. only gripe I have, the only gripe, I don't care, you know, I'm pretty much like you, dude. Go ahead, be whatever you need. But how is that under the trans space? That's the only gripe I have about it. Like, no, we're not the same. No. We didn't, Anton and I didn't choose this. This, like our actual condition, who we are, like we're not one day gonna be this and one day, we, we, as you see, Antron struggled hardcore. Do you think non-binary people actually struggle? They might in some sense, but I don't think it's the same struggle we have. It doesn't appear to be. It doesn't appear no. to be. Um, Look, the other thing is, um, well, <laughs> okay, let me take you on a, I'll, let me go back to the story. Yeah, um, yeah. So I, I'm in Queensland, I'm transitioning, uh, I got my first job as Anton, um, which is my, actually my first job really, like, other than what I'd created for myself. Um, so I, I got a cafe job, as, I went and got barista qualifications, I love coffee, I'm, in, I'm Italian, um, <laughs> So, yeah, no kidding, Anton. <laughs> you should see you should see the hair on my chest. <laughs> awesome. um, yeah, it was there was no kidding. I was Italian when I started testosterone and everything went. Pfft, you know, like, that. Yeah. <laughs> like a chia pet, dude. You're like, <laughs> so, awesome. But, um, no, um, and 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 oh, and but it all seemed to like it migrated. Fuck it, kind of like totally, totally. I had to say, mine just went off. <laughs> I had a beautiful head of hair and now it's gone. No, but you look great. You actually look great. You have a good head. Well, thank you. Um, anyway, so um, I I was starting to find my happiness, actually. I'd, I'd never been freer in my life. It was it was like, oh, you know, things were feel, things felt right for me. They fit. And I thought, okay, now I can actually move forward in life. For the first time at 34, I'm feeling like I've got a life to live, you know, and I want to do things now. And I, so I was starting to build my life and uh and that's when i'm i uh i discovered a love interest um i didn't expect it it was my veterinary nurse um <laughs> that i was taking <laughs> to cat to. so i'd known her for i'd known her, at this stage i'd known her for six years wow. um and uh or oh, actually no maybe less maybe four years um anyway i i'd known her for for a few years and uh because she was the one that that shaved his nads so that he could have his <laughs> So that I could make him an eat, <laughs> <laughs> poor little fella. Um, and uh, and then when I went in there, he'd, he'd had some health issues, um, probably from his gender reassignment. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's terrible. He'd had some health no, issues. It's funny, dude. We have trans people like not, like changing their dogs now, calling them non-binary. I'm like, wow, people are insane. Anyway, yeah. So uh, you cut your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 I took the cat um, to see her quite a few times and, uh, mm. and then she got to know me. And then I went in and I was transitioning and, and I said, look, I'm, I'm transgender and I'm, I'm actually transitioning now and I'm changing my name and everything. And she was like, oh, you know, that's great. You know, congratulations. Why don't we sit down and change things over in the system for you and that. So we did that and I, and I thought, wow, what a nice person, you know, to, to just accept yeah. like that. Um, I didn't realize it was going to develop further and further. Uh, and she asked me if I'd be willing to take her, for, like, to willing to meet her for a coffee. Um, ah, awesome, dude. I followed up on that, and and, uh, and, and the rest is history. We, we'll be married two years in April. So, Congratulations. Um, that's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. I joked that, it, that my pussy bought it together, but that's... <laughs> <laughs> it did. <laughs> um, was he good? Anyway, um, so that was great. But when I proposed to her, well, just before the proposal, just yeah. before the proposal, I was getting sick and I was developing this pain in my hip that I couldn't understand. I thought, man, what is it, like arthritis or something, you know? Mm -hmm. Surely I can't be that unlucky to have something serious again. Um, and uh, and I went and had, um, had some tests done and they discovered I had breast cancer. Um, what? So the breast cancer escaped when they when they did the, the, trans the, the top surgery. Um, okay. I had done a year after, well, four months after I went on testosterone. Um, so I got them off. That was the best surgery of my life. Oh, so you got, so you still had your breasts and you got diagnosed with breast cancer no. and then. No, I had them off. Okay. And I got diagnosed with breast cancer a year later because it had after. stage throughout all my body and was metastasized throughout all my bones and on top of all my bones. Oh, By no. the time they found it from the pain and that, I was terminal stage four. 
What? Um, and I was given a few months. So okay. that was really rough because I was just about to get married. And I thought, what the hell? Um, when I first found out about the cancer and everything, like I was just shocked, you know, like just shocked then. And I was, you know, crying and that. <laughs> and then, and then I found out it was breast cancer. And that was like one of the best things to find out because I was just like, I was so bitter and, and, What's the irony of that? Those things are still getting the last say. They're yeah, killing yeah. me on. They've been the pain of my existence. I was so angry. I said, nah, nah, not happening. I refuse. I refuse yeah. for this to be the end. I will fight this all the way. It's not happening. And I said to, I said to my wife, Beck, I said, don't give up on me yet. Um, I'm going to beat this. Um, hey, it's, awesome. it's over three years on. Um, Yay! Oh uh, wow, dude, you did your did. mind over matter. Did you have to go through chemo? Yeah, I did chemo and radiation on some spots in my spine. Um, oh, so I had fractures all over the. All my ribs were fractured. My spine was fracturing. My discs were collapsing. Um, the pelvis had a hole in it about about that size. Like you know, it was it was uh, there was so much. It's I've defied the odds, and I, uh, it blows my mind that it's I can, shocking. It's sh so, so now, so wow, dude, I'm shocked. Actually, you, you've been, you've been throwing shit at you for sure. It's, I mean, literally it's crazy. Did they, so when you were taking the testosterone and they find the cancer, did they make you stop taking the testosterone? No, because they tested the cancer and the cancer is estrogen positive. So then they did my histology and I also have the BRCA2 gene mutation, which means all the women in my family need to be very careful. Which now, uh, thankfully, to my uh, letting them know, my sisters, I had three sisters. So far, two of them okay. have tested positive to BRCA2. Oh, no. Uh, I think my mum might have BRCA2. I'm waiting to hear her results, but we're Australian. So, what's that? That's genetic, like breast cancer or cancer gene? That BRCA2 gene seems to be a genetic thing, hereditary, passed down. Genetic, yep. Um, wow. Not everyone will get it, in, even in the right. family, but. It can skip. Very yeah. likely. So. And My God. Yeah, anyway, um, but the fact that it was estrogen positive and they were like, oh, well, we have to, we have to have a hysterectomy now. Um, we have to get rid of all, anything that's making estrogen in your body. And, and I was like, well, if there's silver lining to having cancer, it was the <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you know, You're like, like for that. Yeah. <laughs> no kidding, free. dude. Um, but hey, getting it done for free when you're on chemo, that was also not a great thing. Um, no. Very hard to recover from. Um, it was, yeah, a, it was good, but done, done and dusted. Um, and how long, how long have you been cancer free now? Uh, probably, I'm probably sitting on a year and a half, maybe, um, of it being completely dormant. Excellent. So I'm not Excellent. actually cancer free. It's all there. It's all asleep. It's just asleep. Um, yep. So like I, when I first had my PET scan, I lit it up like a Christmas tree everywhere in the bones and now it's completely dormant. So a hundred percent, um, nothing like that. Fantastic. I'm on some very good medications. So I did the chemo, I did the radiation and then I, yeah. I'm on some medication that, uh, it attacks the specific DNA of this type of cancer and it's working. It's a match for me. So as long as that med works, uh, I'm, I'm doing well, but also oh, so happy. I think that the transitioning has actually helped me. Because okay. um, it's new ground for them. They're writing papers and things on it at the moment and as, as we go. Um, so, yeah, it's really cool. Um, but um, the testosterone has taken over and that's not – I mean, for an estrogen-feeding cancer, I can't imagine that that's going to be helpful. Oh, no. It's great. The, the testosterone is probably a very positive thing for you. It's so crazy, dude. Your story is crazy because I think you're literally supposed to be Anton. You're literally supposed to be a man. You're supposed to have like testosterone in your body. It's crazy. Like it's such a great success story, my friend. It gave me chills. <laughs> I mean, I'm so happy. Really, it's, I'm so I'm so happy that you are you know dormant right now and you survived. You survived. First off, you survived from 14 to 24 brain cancer and what all oh, you survived a cult you survived so much dude you're actually the definition of a survivor for reals yeah but um wow. thank you um it, it's been rough but i wouldn't wish any of this on anybody by any means no. you know? and the transition journey too it's it's amazing it is amazing and eye-opening in so many ways it's very enlightening and it's been wonderful in the way I've been able to lift myself out of, out of a really negative situation and 
benefit from the, my transition. So uh, taking the positives from it. But it's also really hard on you mentally, physically, emotionally, socially. Um, and people need to realize the actual extent of how difficult it is to properly transition. Thanks. So know what you want before you start because you've got to have the balls to go through with it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, it is, it, it's, it's rough. Um, have well, you I think the problem, the problem is, is that you and I are different than I think what we see. Remember how I call myself a transsexual and I would consider mm. you a transsexual. Yes. That's why I make those distinctions mm. because we're not, trans identified people were actually male identified people yes. who have a condition called transsexualism which is gender dysphoria yes. it's so different than what these other people are doing and they're willy-nilly doing it i mean here in america you know it's completely out of control you yes. can just get i can go on the internet right now dude and go in 20 minutes have a have a intake and then they'll mail me a box dude like an actual box of testosterone and yeah, it's not as easy here that i'm aware of I would wow say um but but there are ways of getting it there's ways of getting anything to want it a hundred percent dude there's no doubt no, about it and, and that's really yeah. dangerous and if um if parents are, are not savvy enough to to protect that's them. right um, that's right you know Every parent wants the best for their children. I firmly, totally. you know, yeah. of course there are parents that are not fit to be parents, but you know, we can't really talk about them. That's, that's unfortunately. Yeah, but that, that's a, that's a small, it's not a lot. I, I would say in the scope of things, the majority, I'm a parent, the majority of parents are good people. They want the best for their kids. Of course, there's always bad apples. There's always that kind of situation. The problem I have with the trans kid thing is I think that we're telling parents their kids can be changed into boys and girls when that's not the truth and we're telling them oh it's totally normal and if they forget they don't want to do it they can just go back we're telling them complete total mm. lies while we're screwing up little kids mm. it's in i don't there are you not doing that in australia no, i think it's happening here too not to the same extent Holy um shit. Probably not to the same extent but the social <clears throat> the i don't know what do you want to what do you want to call it the the, the, well, the garbage that's going on behind the scenes, I think people have got some ideologies that are just way off. And, uh, and, and you would know, as somebody who was raised in a cult, who doesn't know an ideological space better than you, dude. So if you are saying that and you, I mean, do you see cult-like uh, um, similarities? Oh, what's absolutely. Going on? I mean, I, I'm, I'm very different in the transgender community. I have been called transphobic before for my opinion. Um, <laughs> I was called transphobic by a non-binary person, which was... <laughs> That's uh, even more insulting. They're not even trans. Calling an actual transsexual trans. But, but to be called that um, and labeled that, in, you know, online and people jump on it and they go, yeah, totally. they all get on the bad way. And, and, that's like, and I say, you know what? That's cool. Like, I'm part of this community. I, I don't belong to it. I don't belong to it. I'm part of this community, but I don't belong to it. I'd like to help the community in ways that I can. I, I think I, I've shown that I put myself forward. Um, I just went last year to Rome to speak at the World Health Congress uh, about gender diversity and people in oncology specifically too, because you know there's it's not really much nope. written about it. So I got an opportunity nope. to talk about the way they're treated and that, and and. and you know, especially in Italy where their prime minister there, I know doesn't like um, transgender mm -hmm. people and, you know, so mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of, there's a lot of biases too. And I'm, I'm, I mean, you know, I could just sit back and, and, and retire basically. I, I've, I've been through enough in my body to just warrant right. playing it easy for the rest of my life if I can. Um, but I don't want to do that uh, because when I got really sick and thought this is the end of my life, I realized I, I want to leave a legacy. What am I leaving? I don't have children. Um, what do I leave behind when I die? Who, you know, if I, if I had any kind of money amassed, which I, I don't have money, okay. Uh, but if I had money amassed, who do I leave that to? I mean, now I've got a wife, but but at the time I was thinking, well, you know, I've got no one and nothing, and who's to say that this Anton Cavalli that I just created ever walked the earth? Really, like, what's? I want to leave my mark. I want to do something for people. Right. Um, and that was thank you. That was a Thanks. little bit of a drive. 
Well, it's so sick how this, I use quote community because I don't feel like it's a community at all. And, you know, I, I left as well. I do work like you specific, exactly like you. I'm going to, it's, you can't tell me I'm not part. I am, but I'm not a part of this new space. And I still continue to give like you do, because I care about, there are people like me and you that I care about here. And I even care about the people who are screwing it up because I'm trying to get them to stop thinking they're trans. I'm trying to get them to notice that they're not trans. There's something else. And it's t totally valid. But this idea that you can just latch on to something that really we take we take so seriously our lives as transsexual people. And we, you know, the fact that you want to still give back where you're being called a transphobic person or they don't even know what you're doing. Do you know that? They don't even know that you're traveling to Rome and speaking and making change for the future transsexual space. And that's the part that hurts my, it hurts my feelings. It does. Because how dare they say that to you when you're making so much, you're, you're actually doing the change. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> they're not dude they're literally causing so much turmoil for us we're like sweeping up the mess that they're creating well you know i i i want to speak to you about transsexual the term um sure. that i i agree with you from in, based on science and terminology and everything yeah I, i'm transsexual um sure. here in australia that term is not really um well accepted of course not um, here either so it's it's difficult it was even difficult like it's difficult for me to go out and say oh well actually i'm a transsexual um yeah. i i agree with you but I, it's not one it's not a term that i throw around because i know it's going to have a negative effect. it does it has negative connotation to some people i get it all the time and I, I totally respect that you don't have to do that i mean you have bigger you have bigger goals there it's not who cares you know i don't even i'm not so, you know, I don't identify as a trans person. I identify as a man. My transsexualism, I consider my disorder, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it's my disorder. But you're right. They, well, even here in America, they don't use the Well, I identify trans. as a trans man. I do make the differentiation. Okay. You know, yeah, sure, of course. I'm biologically yeah. female. Um, yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah. I don't want to keep reminding myself of that, though. Um, I noticed when you, when, you know, when you, when you spoke um, to that, um, wonderful guy in um, in Denmark uh, recently. Uh, Marcus, uh, Marcus. Yeah, oh, he's fantastic. I've been since I saw him on your channel. I've been watching. Great. Right. I, I love it. Um, he's very. He's he's a straight shooter. That that kid. He's a. That's right. Um, but uh, he's probably swings a bit too far for my for my feelings. Um, sure. In his comfort to saying he's a girl, uh, you know, and I'm like, well. I'm aware. I'm aware that biologically I'm a girl, but hey, I've done a lot of modifications, and I've spent. You know, Dude, at this point, you're not a girl, <laughs> and neither am I. I didn't do that to call but, myself a girl. <laughs> but I think the reason why Marcus and myself do it is because people are trying to deny our biology. So as people who are sort of in front of the sort of, I don't want to use. We're not. I'm not an activist. I think somebody who's in a public forum. For myself, I can't speak for Marcus. I, I don't consider myself a female. I am a biological female, yes, but I consider myself male at this point, though I'm not male. It's it's such a difficult thing to walk, but I'm just doing that in order for the world to see my honesty and that I'll yeah. never – and so you're doing the same, but yeah. you're not walking around saying I'm a woman. I don't – neither – it, it, well, it just happens viewed, to be. I don't want to be viewed like that. That's that's no, me neither. My identity, yeah. um, because yeah. I need to change my identity to live. I can't. That's live. right. I can't live as a woman. Right. So I've that's changed right. my identity so that I can live as a man and right. be very honest and straight, uh, straight about it. I'm trans man. That's my category. Um, so gotcha. But um, yeah. I mean, because you know, there's there's so much, and I mean, we could talk on so many topics, Buck. There's so many oh, topics that how, how many? It's crazy. I mean, even the how many genders are there, and uh, you know, and, <laughs> and assigned yeah, those people. Well, those people. They, I feel like they. I feel like they want to cause problems. That's how I feel. I feel like they want to mess with the system. I feel like they. Um, there's just a different agenda over there. I don't align with that at all. Uh, and and I mean, why can't we just assume that a baby that's born with a vagina is a girl, and a baby that's born with a penis is a boy? I know exactly. Because why? That's what my eyes and brain tell me when I look and and process. 
because that's because it is. it is right and yeah. we'll grow up and, and as they're growing and that they're in their freedom and love and everything they'll yeah if if they have the misfortune and i say that the misfortune of having gender identity disorder which is what i had i wasn't born trans i was born a girl who developed gender dysphoria right. gender identity dis- disorder brilliant and that confusion caused problems. It makes you un- it makes you sick. It makes you unhealthy, and then leads to um, dysphoria, gender dysphoria. That's right, and it leads to a lot of things that you can get: alcoholism, drug addictions. You know, uh, um, wanting to off your. I mean, there's some layers upon layer: depression, anxiety. It's not a joke, and I think somehow. When they say you don't need gender dysphoria to be trans, I just want to die. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, that's like you don't need. It would be like saying um, you don't really need cancer to have cancer. It'd be that ridiculous. Like, what are you talking about? Like, you want I can't. I have cancer. You don't go around saying to everybody or identify as your cancer. It's you know we have something that is very debilitating, and I feel like they're making a mockery out of what you and I had to suffer to get to this space. Mm-hmm. I mean, I agree that I agree that transgender, the term, a person who's transgender, sure. transgender is not a mental disorder. Okay. But it, it's a medical disorder and medical. it contains a mental component, a that's mental right. disorder as its components. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that, that that's that in all, in all that I've been sort of, studying and working out that's probably what i've come to that's how that's how i feel um it fits the best uh because well yeah yeah i I, I agree with you but but i do say that i have an actual and again this is the other thing i want people to see look at anton and i we're both trans dudes we're both living our lives as men we're both moving forward we're totally solid in our space but we might have a different opinion about what our own diagnosis means to us and that is important that people see that we're not a blanket statement trans community is not everyone is not the same our diagnoses could be different the way we present to the world can be different so many layers there and so you consider i consider it a medical condition too but i also say that i have it's in my brain but you you and that's the thing is you deal with it in a different way than i deal with it and that's the respect you and i have as brothers in this space and understand whatever it need, you need to do to get to that next space, I, I'm totally there for you. And that's the that's what I want people to see, that we don't hate on each other. We actually try to help each other, but we don't say, oh, well, no, dude, you have to call it a – no, you can call it whatever you want, my friend, and you can do however it helps you to get to the next space to be Anton. That's all I care about. Mm. Now, I – I have some other medical conditions and that, um, I, and and symptoms, things like um, the atrophy and and, and the things that, that yeah. you've spoken about. Um, and I, I can't actually say whether it's from the testosterone or from the chemo. <laughs> that's, this is that's, yeah. my, that's my problem. Is like I don't. Know. It's hard for me to differentiate, um, to isolate what's come from from my sure. Gender treatment. Because they had to take the estrogen out of your body because of the cancer. Yeah. So that would give you atrophy. But on top of it, so would the testosterone. So you're right. You don't but I would say partly it might be from the testosterone and maybe partly from and I do think that it's part and part. Um Are they giving you anything for treating that for you? Right? No, not but you had a hysterectomy, right? Yeah. Do you still have pain or atrophy or any of that stuff? It's a little bit. I do get a little bit, but it's not it's not worth. It's not. It's got nothing on the other pains I've got from the from the. From the <laughs> um, I know, dude. You've been to hell and back. You're like whatever. <laughs> I, I, well, that's a little bit there, but you know. um, yeah. um, but I also find it. See, I I, I know I've got to be true. I, I find it very discom. It's very uncomfortable for me to talk about um, anatomy down there. And female anatomy. I get it. It's totally not comfortable. It's. So, a, I mean, the whole point of transitioning is so we never have to talk about it again. No, and then I have to go and have people run prodding up there and, 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 and then it's down for the rest of my life. Um, These are the downfalls of, for us, and especially people like who don't have bottom surgery. Like, we just have, you have to get checked and you have to go. It's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. <laughs> you know, women don't like, women don't like doing it, let alone guys like us. 
what my GP actually forgot my my doctor my general practitioner he, he forgot and said um one day um oh um hey um I was looking at if I we, we probably haven't done a prostate you probably got a prostate yet too. and I thought like, he's forgotten that's great you know I said mate you can stick a finger out there I don't think you're gonna find me. <laughs> It's a compliment. It's and a compliment. It's a compliment. It was funny because yep. you know I actually felt I actually felt ah that's really great. At least it's, it's a huge compliment. compliment. Um, <laughs> I love it, dude. This is a, these are the funny parts of being trans, guys. Like you know yeah. the things people say to us, and like it's kind of hilarious, actually. That's the great thing about you, Anton. I know you don't take everything as you know an attack on you or transphobic or I mean I mean that's you got to take. You're going down another. You're going down another topic here. Hey, people are way too sensitive, way wow. too sensitive with language wow. and that. You know, hey, it comes down to intent. We've created. We've created. We want to be have people accept us. We want people to accept us and be open. To that. But yet, we're building our own barriers. Can't you see that? As a community, you're putting the walls up in front of us and society. And then you say, but we want to be part of society. We want to be everything. We deserve everything. We can even access spaces that maybe we shouldn't be accessing out of respect. But, um, that, you know, that's all I really want to say on that bit. But, but um, <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's too much. It's oh, ridiculous. It goes on and on. But the, the language, the language that we're creating, come on now. If someone has good intentions, and they accidentally say the wrong things, but they've got a good heart and they're just talking with me. I'm not going to pick them up on every single moment and, and say, oh, you can't say that. Oh, you, oh, oh, thanks, my big, uh, Guess why you're like that. You want to know why? I know why you're like that because you're accepting. You've accepted who you are. You know exactly who you are. You have nothing to hide. You're not hiding anything. Those people have not accepted themselves and they're so in need of validation from the rest of the world and they don't even know it it's totally they don't know who they are so they're scrambling and they get mad if someone miss the fact that the people would lose their shit the way they do over being misgendered says a lot to me it's actually well, um, social media has got this thing where it's you know it's you get fame you get attention everyone's attention seeking right. and they want to go on tiktoks right. with them um, every and they it's like they set up they set up the misgendering just so that they can put it on TikTok, so that they can get the clips, so that they can get, you know, oh, come on. this If that's what we come to, I don't want any part in that. That's Neither do I. Ridiculous. Nope. It's embarrassing when I see that. Dude. It's that one trans woman who sets her camera up there and goes to eat in San Francisco. You misgender. You literally set it up. What are you talking about? Also, it's like you know they're going to misgender you. <laughs> it's like she actually knows it dude i'm like oh man this is pathetic i also watch the type of people that do it too um and if you make no if you make no effort to pass either way especially okay. um right. and you get misgendered either way or well i don't know like how can you say that that's misgendering because the person's trying yeah. to just process and do what they need to do to serve you your bun um that's right they're not. They're not there to, to try and make you feel. Like but you one one word one word you said earlier. That's a super important word that I I always intent intention is the person intentionally misgendering you. That's different than if they actually in their eyes and their brain registers a female or a male. That that's not their fault. That's just and it was not intentional. Mm. That that's that's where we you said earlier. Everyone's so butthurt. And so sensitive about everything. I don't. I don't know how they're going to move forward in life. How? Yep. They're not. It's sad. Yeah, I agree. Um, from there, where do we go? I mean, you can talk about, you know, pronouns. Um, we all have pronouns. We all use pronouns. Um, it's just I don't know who started the pronoun thing, but I hate I, them. I'm, I'm, yeah, I hate them. I don't think we need to introduce ourselves with our pronouns so that we can be respectful of the potential of someone else needing to use pronouns. If I need to use my pronouns right. in my medical settings or settings of relevance, I use my pronouns. That's different. Um, that's different. That's that's relevant. But that's right. In the supermarket, right. I bump into someone. I'm not going to say, "Hey, how are you? Oh, sorry about that." Excuse me, sir. <laughs> pronoun. Um, you know. It's ma'am. <laughs> just again. But um, it just it shows you. Can't have a the problem I have. 
Anton, it's showing such instability. And so people think you and I are in that instability. And it's why it's important that we speak up because we're not unstable people. Those people are literally the kind of people that if you touch them, they flip out. Like they're just so ready for any kind of negative. And in, 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 nope. You, you understand what I'm saying? I've been around this community for a long time, dude, and I never remember trans women going, it's ma'am. They never did that before, dude. They would just be like, if someone called them sir, they would just kind of keep going, right? Because they don't want to cause a, they don't want to cause a big thing so people see them even more. That's why I think a bunch of these people are just doing it for clout. Look, I started a, um, a Facebook page for, my, I'm, I'm getting into public speaking um, here. Great. Um, on a national level, and uh, and right. that's right. something I really want to work on this year. Um, right. So I, I I started you know, but I started that a while ago a, face, a Facebook page. I'm not really going to be a YouTuber or anything. I'm I'm not very technologically savvy as you as that's you right. found out when you first um <laughs> when we were trying to get the microphone working. Um, so um I don't want to go doing all that stuff, and I, I really yeah. don't have an interest in 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 devoting that amount of time to to yeah. online, but um, I think I can be more impactful talking with people face to face and and being human. Um, yep. yep. And so that's where I'm. That's the tactic I'm taking. Right. Um, I. But I. But even I. I put some things up. I post on my little Facebook page. Uh, I posted a post just yesterday about um, our, our good friend Dylan Mulvaney. Right. Um, <laughs> oh my God! I can really? see that that person is just after money after click, after yeah. attention, and has major health problems. I'm sorry, but I feel sorry for them. They need to go see a psychiatrist. They they yeah. need to have some real help. They're gonna Get break. You watch. No, 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 dude, it's actually sad. I agree with you. I don't hate Dylan in any it's way, no. or shape or form. I just think Dylan on some level is using our community to make a shit ton of cash. And then we'll we'll actually say they're not trans. You watch. Well, do, you see, and, do, you see, do you see people like me in the community um, latching onto the, the mega stars and stuff? I, I could do it. I could do it. Totally. I work in the 100%. music industry. I've got contacts of a lot of singers and that that I've worked yep. with. I've yep. met people. I'm not going for people with fame to get them on side um, in the public eye just to have a photo with me and say, you know, oh, yeah, that, um, and and then get more money. It's and what's Dylan worth? Like two million at least, probably. I don't it, know. He's made a uh, shit ton of money. Yeah. It, yep. That the, on the our backs. Proof is there of what that person's agenda is. The proof That's is right. right there. And right. yet people get butt hurt when I post something like that on my Facebook, you know? Um, of course. They'll, they'll, I'll expect it. I'm expecting it. It'll come. Comments will come, whatever, because people are like, how can you say that? How can you judge her? She's not a her. Because that's a cult. The trans community has become a cult, dude. Like, how dare you tell me I can't have a different opinion? I'm allowed yeah. to have a di – I live in a, a, a democracy space, man. If I don't like Dylan, I don't have to like Dylan. <laughs> I've been in one cult. I'm not I – didn't, I didn't transition and go through all this cost and pain to join another cult. That's so right. And I've, and I've been very honest and clear with my friends in the trans community too that – I'm respectful in that, but I also have my own values and beliefs, and I, and I do not belong to anybody. I stand on my own. Excellent, 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 dude. And that's what I, that's why I'm trying to platform more people like you because we need to show that we have a different opinion. Uh, it doesn't make us not trans or part of the community. And also, what kind of community agrees all together? Isn't that cult like? Because I don't know, you're, you're supposed to have different opinions in a community. You're supposed to like have like diverse. What's diverse about having the same opinion? <laughs> it's so crazy, dude. It is so, but I, same way, you know me, I don't, I don't back down. I will not back down. I don't care. I really don't care. All my friends, right? All my friends don't talk to me anymore. They were just, you know, they were never your friends, dude. That's how I look at it. Cause the people who stayed with me and say, look, I don't agree with what you're saying, Buck, but I still like you a lot. And I think those are my friends because I don't care that they don't agree with me. I don't agree with them. Right. So what, who cares? We can still sit at the table together and have coffee and, Sort of, I like this. I like dialogue that pushes on me, right? I like if you have a different opinion. I think it's more powerful. Yeah. Um, well, I have my own brand of coffee, so when you come over, we'll, we'll have a we'll have coffee, okay? Dude, I'm a. Oh, you have your own brand of coffee? 
I do. We should talk. I'll talk offline because I want to. Maybe we can do something together. That would be I, awesome. I can't send it to America. It's very difficult. Really? Oh, because it's a like a not a fruit, a vegetable, or whatever. A food. Food is hard yeah, to because yeah. you're an island. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know the rules. There's something I can't get it past. <laughs> <laughs> I looked right on, dude. <laughs> so we're going to end here because we're almost at an hour. But I just want to um, say, first off, that I appreciate you a lot as a friend and a brother and a trans person and s- stepping up to the plate. And I also want to see if you want to leave a message out there maybe to whoever or just leave a little wisdom because you, you've been through a lot, friend. You have to have some serious wisdom behind you. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I think that... I think that having lived in a woman's space for 34 years and then joining the men's realm, um, you certainly learn a lot about women and, uh, and a lot about men. And you can uh, understand it's like a superpower. I, I do use it to my advantage, especially when my wife says things, uh, asks a question that I know, hey, not answering that. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Um, so no, it's worked well. Um, I, understanding each other, is an individual thing, yeah? You know, like we, we're all individuals. We're not mm-hmm. robots. We're not meant to be in a big cult thing like, That's right. you know, like the Borg on Star Trek. I don't know if you're a Star Trek fan. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're not a collective like that. Um, we are still our individual selves. And you should always be true to yourself and your values and, and stand up for your own beliefs and rights. That's, that's what makes us humans. And that's what's important on this earth. When you leave this earth... You don't want to be just realize there's nothing that, that you haven't, that no one knows what your thoughts were really were other than you just went along with everybody else. Like leave your mark, make your stand. That's how I feel. Anyway, that's just my. Great. No, it's beautiful. Yes. It's really, a lot of young people need to hear that, my friend. I think that they're lost and I don't think they have individual, they're not understanding their space as an individual. They're very. Um, they're scared. Their, they're scared to be yourself. They're scared. I agree, but they're being also kind of manipulated, that, and that scares me for them. I think you know they're, they're 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 getting into a space where it's easy for them to be sort of just pulled on. You know, it's a very specific kind of young person, I think, who is non-binary and trans, and it, I, I think these kids are seeking something. So, mm-hmm. as I I consider you an elder in the community as well, and as elders in this community, I think we have a responsibility to step up and say, hey, if you're trans, right on, we'll help you move forward. But maybe you're not. Just calm down, mm-hmm. take it slow and figure it yeah, out. That's and, right. you know, we're here for you, we are. But um, so, so with that, thanks everybody for watching today. Please leave Anton super beautiful, awesome. And if he wants, I'll put his information so you guys, anybody can contact him. And um, I appreciate all of you so much. Remember, my lives are on Wednesday uh, at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time, and I appreciate you all joining us. And um, so leave Anton love because he's an awesome dude. And um, thanks, Anton. You are awesome. What a great interview. And thank you for being – thank you for sticking around in this world, dude, because we need you more than ever. So I appreciate you. That's right, dude.